Mythic Dawn, written by Magnet Bolt, published on the 19th of December, 2019. Chapter 6 What kind of shook and blink do you mean that you ain't heard of Cranberry Day? Arteria huffed. It's one of the most cracking holidays in all of Australia. Every pony in the room looked from Arteria to Ibis. She shrugged. I have no idea what she's talking about, Ibis said. I don't know why you all expect me to be a walking library of random trivia. Though I suppose my vast encyclopedian intellect is to blame. And all you workbirds put me on flame gas duty for thinking I make up my jabs, and here she is bringing out words that don't even make a wink of sense. Arteria scoffed. Ugh. Cranberry Day is the celebration of the founding of the capital of Australia, Cranberry Canyon. You realize none of us know anything about Australia, right? Lurkin asked. They rolled over onto their back, stretching and reaching up. You all live on the ceiling, right? Yes, but it's rude as a dagger to point it out, Arteria mumbled. Anyhow, one of you shokers must have a hair on it, since I got this here cranberry day gift. She held up a parcel carefully wrapped in black silk. It wasn't me, Don said. Barely odd shrugged. I've never heard of it either, Phantasma agreed. Lurkin shrugged. Did you get food? I got food last time we had a holiday. Arteria paused. I don't know. I didn't open it. Bullias thinks Pony should open it. Arteria shrugged and tugged at the silk with the tips of her wings. Did a proper tie down on this street, she mumbled. I'd near swear this silk was from... She managed to get the hidden knot, finding an edge to the fine black silk and unveiling her gift. Inside was a wooden cage, and looking out through the bars were six tiny glowing eyes. No shocking way, Arteria whispered. This bloke is a six-eyed star spider to the friendliest little wall crawls in all of Australia, barely even poisonous enough to knock you out. Barely scratched his head. Spider is present? Is it food? Lurkin asked. I honestly have no idea what bat ponies eat. I believe from her reaction, it's a pet, Ibis said. Arteria opened up the cage and the spider crawled out, up her hoof and onto her shoulder, making cute spider noises. Aw, she's already a cuddler, Arteria said, tilting her head to rub her cheek against the star spider. It's got something on its back, Don said. Arteria looked. Huh, it's a cranberry day cod. She pulled it free with her mouth and unfolded it like a flower. She mumbled to herself, reading whatever was written in it, and froze up. Oh no! What's wrong? Phantasma asked. This is awful! Ateria whispered. This is the shocking, shocking, shockest, shocking shock! Is it just me, or has our use of slang degraded to the point where her syntax has become totally encrypted semantic garbage? Ibis asked. Maybe it's a separate dialect where the intonation and emphasis on syllables changes the meaning of the words. Don suggested. I think there are some old unicornian languages like that, from the Third Dynasty. Dynasty nothing! Arteria snapped. This is blinking awful! You got a present. How bad can it be? Lurkin asked. Mishok and Mom is coming to school for the holiday! Arteria shrieked. <clears throat> now. If you ladies and gents don't mind, I'm thinking I'm gonna flip-flap and yell until I've screamed out all my terror and pass out. That sounds fun, Lurkin said. Can I join in? Arteria nodded. Sure. Lurkin got up and started running around and screaming. Phantasma sighed. I hate Cranberry Day. Okay, I'm going to need an explanation, Don said, closing the door behind her. First, it turns out whatever you said to Principal Starlight convinced her to start decorating the school for a holiday I'm still not sure is actually real. Second, why are you so scared about your mom showing up? My mom Arteria sighed. She gave the spider a few more pets, stroking along its abdomen. Alright, so that's one hefty loop-de-loop -loop of a tail. I inspired any of you about even one shot of that broken mirror. 
Would it be too much to beg you to use normal ponish? Don groaned. Arteria thought carefully for a long moment. Mm, yes. I think I'm going to get you a thesaurus for Cranberry Day. Don said. I don't glum on what a thesaurus is, but if it's anything like a hook bird, I've already got a pet. And she's a sweet little girl. Don sighed. Arteria, come on. I just want to help. Tell me what's going on. I guess if you want to know why I got the wing shivers about my mum, I gotta go all the way back to the story that my mum told me when I was ear eyed with the lagmite. <clears throat> After the day of the nightmare, our ancestors were labelled enemies of Equestria. They had supported Nightmare Moon, and when she was banished, they had no leader, no cause, and no allies. They had been honourable and clever ponies in their own way, but now all the crimes of their master landed on their heads. Celestia could have shown us mercy, forgiven us our crimes, but she turned her gaze away and allowed us to be put on trial. For the crimes our ancestors committed, our bloodlines were banished for all time from any place where the sun might shine upon us. As we had supported Endless Night, we were no longer to see the day. Hundreds of us were driven into the deep caverns of the earth, the endless black miles of tunnels and darkness. The way back to the light was sealed behind us, and we were supposed to die forgotten and blind in the bowels of the earth. Instead, we thrived and forged a new land of our own. Arteria coughed, dropping back into her usual tone. Thestrals are all descendants of those criminals, Arteria explained. Mostly Pegasus ponies, but you probably got the echo of that one just from me having flip-flaps, even if they ain't all fluffed. Also got Earth Pony and Unicorn in their distance somewhere, probably how we can walk on the roof. Interesting, Don muttered. So that's why they're so little known. It really isn't on any map, and it's part of the history Celestia wanted forgotten. Yeah, Princess Luna found out about us right after she came back, and even took a few of us into a personal guard, Arteria said. Honestly, I'm almost more surprised you can speak for that long without saying something using made-up slang. It ain't made up, Arteria protested. There's plenty of topsoil lingo I don't gotta bite on. Can't blame a bat for not crawling when they can fly, you grog me? I grog like half of what you're saying, Don said. Let me see if I understand. With Luna back, presumably Equestria has started trying to open up dialogue with Australia, and we're celebrating one of your fake holidays- It's a real holiday! I even got a present! Approves us on the deep down! One of your obscure holidays- Don corrected. Because they want to... make you feel included? More like they want me mum to feel included. Arteria mumbled, rubbing her mane. I don't like to wag my wingspan like a filly with the biggest lake bug in a crawl, but she's sort of a big bat down there. It's like, uh, well, you know how the mares in Canterlot that ain't the tightest are from important families? Sure. Most of the nobility is war heroes, or old money, or had really famous and powerful sorcerers in their lineage. Right on. Our greatest heroes are the ponies who helped us tame the wilds, the rock rangers and hookbird wranglers who kept us alive through them early times. My family is descended from Blackbread Nelly, a mare who went and fought off a whole Durgo raiding army on her own. She lured him into a tight canyon and held the ground where an armor bodged together from a box of scraps. Oh, I get it. Your family's nobility, huh? Don't frown. Why is that such a big deal? I knew a lot of nobles, and you're... well, you're in the upper half. Is that good or bad? Arteria asked. Good! You're like a million times better than some ponies. Like Azir. Don groaned. <laughs> At least I don't have to worry about her showing up. No. Instead, you go keep your ears open for my mum pouncing on us. You don't get how bad it can be. See, when I say she's a big bat, I mean she's the biggest bat. And, uh, I might have gone topside without asking her for leave. Or writing. You ran away from home? Keep your voice down! Arteria hissed. Last thing I need is gossip spilling everywhere. I don't even know how she found out I was here. I ain't even gabbed my real title, and I wear a disguise everywhere. A disguise? Wait, you mean the sunglasses are supposed to be a disguise? Well, duh. Arteria scoffed. Can't tell all what I really look like. You can barely even see me on account of how shady they make things. Dawn rubbed her snout. That's not how sunglasses work. But I bet either Princess Luna tipped her off about you, or Princess Twilight got curious enough to ask about it herself. You're the only bat pony in school, so your mom probably put two and two together and figured out the only bat pony outside of Thestralia is the only bat pony missing from Thestralia. 
oath. When you lay it out like that, it makes me feel like a bug and wondering why there ain't no tunnels going across a canyon. Arteria groaned. You don't think she'll try to pull you out of school, will she? Don asked. Fair right question. Arteria sighed. She won't like that I ain't going to make the principal treat me like royalty. Good thing Starlight ain't a stallion, neither. Mum don't like the notion of stallions working instead of staying home and taking care of the nest. She's a bit old-fashioned about that. Old-fashioned? Dawn raised an eyebrow. Well, you know how it is. Arteria scoffed. Stallions are emotional, delicate, not really suited to be leaders. That sort of dinkum. If she thought a stallion was in charge of things, she'd probably flip a Yui and do something dumb. How bad is flipping a Yui? Dawn asked, suddenly worried. Why? Arteria asked slowly. Oh, honey crust. Arteria groaned. What's wrong? Sunburst asked. Are the banners okay? I just sort of took an educated guess and went for dark red. I mean, cranberry day, right? So probably we should do something with cranberries. That's not the bargain in the well. Arteria sighed. What do you mean Principal Starlight's out for the week? Apparently something happened in the Crystal Empire and Princess Twilight asked her to take care of it personally. Sunburst said. I didn't really get the details, but d don't worry, I'm on top of this. You kids don't have anything to worry about. He paused. Um, and I apologize on behalf of the school for not using your title before, Duchess. Don turned slowly. Duchess? Arteria coughed, her cheeks red. Can we put Fang in that and pretend it ain't the Abolith in the room? Isn't Duchess like... One step down from Princess? Don asked. Arteria groaned. That's why I don't go none and try to drop the title like a drop cloak spot and pray down below. What's a drop cloak? Sunburst whispered. Don shrugged. You uplanders ain't got proper wildlife. They lurk on the ceiling and wait for something to walk under them. Saw like a trapper, but on the reverse. Very dangerous critters. They bite onto you and wrap you all up like a pony Rito until you're just bones. Dawn glanced up, just in case. Looks like I'm gonna have to mare down and take charge. Arteria sighed. <sighs> so, first step in the dark we need is the giblets. Can't have a cranberry day festival without something to gub on so the whole roost can shove their mouths full of sugar instead of their own oofs. Well, I've already placed an order, so there should be cupcakes here by tomorrow. Sunburst said. You kids don't have to worry. I've got everything perfectly under- Boy! Don't you even dare! Arteria snapped, her wings raising up to make her look bigger, like she was trying to scare off a predator. You know what kind of pugum that brings when a feckless stallion goes and says things can't get worse, or everything's under control, or some shocking death thing like that? This isn't a war. This is just a little party. A little- Arteria huffed. You ain't even got an echo of what my mum is like. If things aren't exactly perfect- <sighs> She shuddered. Well, how about we go down to the bakery to check on the order? Don suggested. It's probably Sugar Cube Corner, right? Sunburst nodded. I gave the order to Pound Cake myself. It's a little tight with the Summer Sun celebration right around the corner, but he was able to fit us in. Speaking of that, we can probably use my checklist for the celebration to make sure everything important is done for your mother's arrival. Grand idea, Don. Arteria said. We'll just pop in and make sure it's all on the down low. After we check on the food, we can try to arrange some music. I doubt that'll be hard. Don said, looking over a piece of scrap paper she jotted some notes onto. Most musicians have plenty of time on their hoofs in the lead up to the celebration, and the local ones aren't going to go on tour when they could be playing here for Princess Twilight. Don looked up and realized she was speaking to thin air. Arteria? She looked around and up, and it wasn't until she looked back that she saw Arteria was standing in the school's doorway, shuffling her hoofs pensively. Don walked back over, putting the paper away. Are you okay? Don asked. This isn't some kind of weird reverse vampire thing where I have to formally invite you outside, is it? Because if it is, I have some serious questions about how you got to the castle of the twin sisters a few weeks ago. Can you keep a secret? Arteria whispered. Better than most ponies. Don said. I don't like going out of doors. Arteria hissed. She looked up. It ain't Cracker. Look at that! It's the sky. Exactly! No ceiling at all! Don't matter how hard you listen, there ain't no echo at all. 
It's just a horrible void of shocking nothing looking way up on top. Last time I went out here, Burly Horse didn't have had to carry me until we got to the forest, where the trees were at least some kind of cover. It's like any second I might get sucked right up and never land anywhere at all. You're afraid of the outside? Don blinked. I can't even get one ear on why you ain't shivering in your breeches about all this. You uplanders are so crazy, you can't even begin to grok why it's so shocking awful. Can't even get a return on half the things I can see, like that rock over there. Arteria pointed. That's Canterlot. It's like 20 miles away. Dawn could have been more exact, but this wasn't the kind of conversation where she needed to be more accurate to more than an order of magnitude. 20 miles? I know that sounds pretty far, but the mountain is so tall that we can see it way further than the normal distance of the horizon. If you wanted to calculate it, you can use the square root of the object's height and feet and multiply it by about one and a quarter- Shock, Dawn! This ain't about the shock of math and magic you unicorns do. That's even further than the whole length of Cranberry Canyon. Is that good or bad? It's like being blind. Arteria whispered. Can't hear a shocking thing. And the things you do hear are from so blinking long on that you ain't sure about the direction. No proper tunnels or caverns to shape the sound at all. And things can sneak up on you from anywhere. I guess it's like the opposite of claustrophobia. Don muttered. What can I do to help? I just go a mare down and do it, Arteria said. Can't let me mum catch an ear full of skinty gabs about a little spider bite being afraid of a big nothing. It'd be a stain on the noble bloodline of Black Bread Nelly. Maybe. Don fought. How about I keep talking and you focus on that instead of the quiet? Yeah, yeah, that might work. Arteria nodded. And we'll just walk close like, so I don't get lost if I have to close my eyes to rest him a bit. It's too shocking bright out here. Sure. Don said, taking her hoof. Don't worry, we'll get there. So what was that about music? Arteria asked. Well, depending on what kind of music your mother and you like, we've got a lot of options in town. I already interviewed a few of them to think about options. The town's got everything from classically trained ponies to the latest in Thomasynth Wavecore. That's a new music genre that was invented when two local bands had a terrible cart accident, and the band members that weren't injured had to put together an act using a theremin, electric bass, two vocalists, and a drum set that was half acoustic and half electric. Arteria electronic. nodded along, squeezing Dawn's hoof for support and listening to every word she said to help drown out that terrible emptiness above. You're shocking dragging me, keg mines! Arteria spat, trying to get the taste off her tongue. What the shook and shook did you do to these poor things? It's a normal recipe, Pound Cake said, confused. He leaned in to sniff. Yeah, it's not even one of Aunt Pinky's weird one-offs. That's just a normal crab and carrot cupcake. Carob is normal? Don asked. It's hypoallergenic. Pound shrugged. When we have an order at the school, we have to think about accommodating a lot of different creatures. I ain't serving this to me, Mum. Arteria said. She'd take me home just on principle if she thought I was eating junk like this. Guess I'll have to show you how it's done. She hopped over the counter into the kitchen. Does she know how to cook? Pound asked. Well, she's been taking the basic classes with every pony at the school, but... Um... Maybe it would be a good idea if we supervise. Oi! Where are the onions? Arteria shouted from the back. A very good idea. Pound agreed, letting Dawn back behind a counter so neither of them would be facing whatever was in the kitchen alone. Arteria had, in a shockingly short time, found ingredients that Pound would have sworn weren't in the kitchen before she started looking for them, which either meant she'd brought them with her, or else she'd found one of Pinky's stashes. Don't even got proper red mushy paste, Arteria mumbled. Think I can whip something up with all this? She dumped mushrooms into a bubbling sauce pot. Ain't had to make vajactite from scratch before. Do I even want to know what that is? Ah, oh, well, it's the ultimate elf food is what it is. Arteria said, dumping a whole bag of something into the pot. That was yeast, Pound said. You have absolutely no idea what you're doing. I just said I'm making vajactite. It's a shocking essential in the kitchen. She stirred the boiling pot. It's, uh, it's all made of leftovers for making mushroom ale and all sorts of healthy things for vitamins. Like, uh... She held up a turnip. This... carrot? She guessed. Pound shook his head. Well, it's still healthy. Arteria said, tossing it in. We just go boil the slope down to jam and oingle boingle, that's your uncle. 
How long is that going to take? Don asked, looking into the pot. It looked like mud, if she was being generous. She wondered if the Odiug in the sewers would be willing to eat it. About eight or twelve hours, Arteria said. I can't have that in the kitchen all day, Pound groaned. I've got to bake! Ugh, and the smell is... Uh, he shivered. No worries. I ain't aiming to shoot right through. I'm going to sit here and baby it like my own phone until it's good and ready. Arteria paused. I just winked there in case you couldn't tell with me, Sonny's. Pound gave Don a bleeding look. We've got a lot of other things we need to take care of, Don said. I don't think you can spend the time here, and Pound doesn't know how to make it, um, properly, so we might just want to dump this out. Far away from the store, please, Pound said. Dump it out into the river and figure out something else, Don finished. Arteria sighed. Fair digs. Can't spend all night on this when there's odd yakka to flap onto. We'll just have to speed things up, since me mom would dangle me by my ears if I didn't have a jack tight. You can't just speed up cooking something. Trust me, I learned that lesson the hard way in baking class. Why are you looking at me like that? You're going to try and pass me on the right and claim you ain't going to found a spell that do exactly that? Arteria asked. It's not the kind of thing you can just... Dawn sighed. Okay. We might be able to speed it up a little if we can increase the boiling rate, but if you just turn up the heat, it's going to burn, and a pressure cooker won't release the steam. Pound sat down and extended his wings. I could create a low-pressure zone over the pot. It would let it boil harder and at a low temperature. But that air is going to get saturated with steam pretty quickly. It's sort of a gradient thing. If we could make the air really dry, it'd come out even faster. Maybe a drying spell? Don suggested. I have a lot of practice with how often Larrikin hangs out in my room without asking. All right, let's give it a go, Arteria said, stepping back. Pound started flapping slowly, and the steam rising out of the pot swirled in a vortex, drawn out faster and faster while the bubbling reached a fever pitch. Dawn cast her spell, pulling the steam out of the air as fast as she could. The pot bubbled and actually jumped a little, the suction pulling it up. Dawn grabbed the handles, holding it down. Is it working? Arteria asked. It's doing something! Dawn yelled. Just hold off for another minute, Poundcake said. It shouldn't take long to let it boil down at this rate. And then he hoped they could throw the whole pot into the Everfree. He'd never be able to cook caramels in it again. The bubbling and steaming came to a slow stop, and the pot jumped a few more times like a thrashing animal caught in a trap, before finally going still. It's done, Pound sighed, folding his wings. Don was the first to look inside. And she looked mortified. I'm sorry, Arteria. I think we messed something up really badly. Inside the pot was a layer of almost jet black muck, two inches deep and as thick as marmalade. All the vegetables and assorted things Arteria had thrown in had broken down into it and there was absolutely nothing identifiable left. Hmm. Arteria rubbed her chin. Then she grabbed a few slices of bread from the counter. What are you doing? Pound asked. Well, we go a test it, don't we? Arteria asked. Eh, toasties, would you? We'll need a slab of butter, too. Can't do a proper vajactite semi without it. You can't be serious, Pound said. Don dutifully toasted the bread, and Arteria buttered each slice, and added a thin layer of the black mush from the pot. I'm not sure this is food, Don said. Look, we're all in this together, Arteria said. We'll try it on three. One, two, three. Like three ponies going to the gallows, they raised the bread up and bit into it. Pound immediately spat it out, gagging. Dawn managed to swallow and put the rest of her toes down, pushing it far away. Arteria took a second bite, then a third, then finished her toast. Oh, shocking oath, that is blinking amazing! It's even better than the real thing! Oh, it's supposed to taste like that? Pound gagged. Well, a delicate little stallion like you probably can't handle it, but Don kept it down, eh? She patted the unicorn on the back. Good stuff. You should be able to make some swirly bread and filled steam buns like that, right? I technically can, Pound said. I'm not sure it would be ethical. Look. 
It's for me mum. She'll love it. Please. Fine. Pound side. I'll figure something out. Cracker, what's next on the list, Don? Music, I think. Let me just, um, give him my notes. Why don't you wait out front and I'll catch up? Sure. You gonna eat that? She pointed to Don's toast. It's all yours. Don said, passing it over. Arteria happily bit into it and walked out of the kitchen. Pound watched her go, then looked at Don. I can't serve that to ponies, he hissed. Look, just make a few things with it, then put the rest in a jar or something else for her. Don whispered. Make the rest of the cupcakes in a regular way. Pound nodded glumly. I'll get her out of here before she thinks of other ways to help. Don promised. Okay, let's see what you got, Arteria said. I think you'll like this, Neon Light said. Okay, everybody, from the top. One, two. The band lurched into action. Regardless of what genre they claimed to play, which varied depending on the day and which member of the band one decided to ask, they were essentially a jazz band operating on the very edge of the esoteric edge. They were clearly very professional about the whole operation too. Every time one of them hit a sour note, they glared at some pony else as if it was their fault. You were defo not telling a furphy on this, Arteria sighed. It's like some pony found the loose bits of two bands in the trash and bodged them into an act. The two vocalists were nice enough to take turns, which was good because one was trying to growl like they were summoning electric demons with the assistance of the ferryman, and the other was belting out lyrics about being in love. They're very popular, Don said. With who? Don tried to come up with an answer to that, while the bases did his level best to play well, though he sped for the easiest parts and had to slow down for the more difficult passages, meaning he was never quite on beat with the drums, which the Furman player was trying to manage with a forehoof and bass pedal while also waving his other forehoof in the air to produce droning tones from the rest of his equipment. I mean, they're not bad, Don said. Arterio was about to say something, so Don quickly revised her statement. Individually, Don corrected. Arteria scrunched up her nose, her ears twitching. She nodded. Bit iffy having them all in the same place. You sure they're all playing the same song? It was a good question, because they didn't all quite manage to finish at the same time, the bass player trailing off into an awkward solo before just stopping. So, what do you think? Neon Lights asked. Would you say the name of this? Arteria gestured at the four ponies. Band? Is band defo the word we're using? Okay, what's the name of this band then? Captain Neon and his magic band, Neon Light said. I thought we were going with Pecan Sandys, asked Gastalion on drums and ferryman. No, we're not using that. Riff, I told you, we really need to play on the fact we're like nothing else, Neon retorted. Also, we need to tell people we're a band. Arteria nodded. I get the echo on why you'd have a header on that. Just one minute, no worries. She pulled Dawn aside, then a little more aside when the band started tuning their instruments. Or playing another song, it was hard to tell. I admit they're not the best. Dawn whispered. You're gonna have to speak up a bit on account of how my ears are ringing. What's the polite way to tell them to flap off? Well, before you do that, you should know one very important thing. Dawn said. What's that? They're the only ones who showed up when we offered the job. What? It turns out quite a few local bands have decided to take the summer to go on tour and only come back for the Summer Sun celebration, which means just about every pony who knows how to hold an instrument correctly isn't here. They'll be here in a few days, sure, but not tomorrow. You mean to tell me in this town where you promised there were dozens of musicians? This is all we have right now because of the short notice. Don sighed. Well, buck me dead, Arteria groaned. It's better than nothing, right? Don smiled bravely. I mean, no matter how picky your mother might be about music or anything, they're a local band and they're enthusiastic. Let's just try to be polite and nice, because otherwise we're going to have to hope Ibis and Phantasma have hidden musical talents that they'll discover in the next day. Arteria sighed and swept back her white mane. She turned to the band. How many songs do you blokes know? Neon Lights looked at the other band members. 
We've never really managed to play the same one twice. Well, it'll be original then. Welcome aboard. So that's food and entertainment. Arteria said. What's left? Cider. Don said. Cider? Arteria repeated. What's that? You've never had cider? Don smiled. It's unfiltered apple juice. The apple family has a secret recipe and the best apples in Equestria, according to Princess Twilight. Yeah, but aren't we going pretty far, Bush? I can barely see a town from here. She squeezed Don's hoof tighter and looked firmly down at the ground so she wouldn't see the sky. I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure you need a lot of space for an apple orchard. Don said. We're almost there. You'll be okay. I know. I'm almost used to it. Arteria said. Thank you for getting me through this mess. I couldn't have even flapped my way free of the doorway without you. Hey, you're my friend. Don squeezed Arteria's hoof back. I know this whole thing with your mother is really hard for you. Family can be tough, and this got dropped on you out of nowhere. I knew she catch up to me at some point, Arteria muttered. I just thought it would take longer. Why did you leave? Don asked. It's okay if you don't want to tell me. I just, you know, I'm curious. It's a mystery hanging right over the head of one of my friends, and it's been nagging at me for hours to try and get answers. <laughs> yeah. Phantasma says you're like a black spider wolf. Once you got your fangs in something, you never let go of it till it stops struggling and gives up. Arteria laughed. I can't really keep things a secret now with me mum on the way, so I guess I wouldn't be too dezo to flap above the trouble and put in me own shout. Don relaxed. Thank you. I just want to know what we're dealing with. Yeah. Arteria agreed, leading her over to a tree so she could sit with something overhead. So you've lived in Kano lot, yeah? You must have a solid bite on what the nobility is like, yeah? Don said next to her. It's a mixed bag. Most of them are just like any other pony, but... There are the rules. Yeah, crack on. The rules. I had to act like something I wasn't. Like playing a part in a drama your whole life. No real breaks, just constantly memorizing scripts and saying the right words to every pony. She shook her head. Ain't no way to live. I saw how it drained at me, Mum. It's sort of true everywhere, isn't it? Don asked. Like when you're a student, you have to act like a good student. Tell that dink of Nalarikin and see if that web can catch him off. You know what I mean. I'm not nobility, but when I was in Kerala, I still had to play by the same rules. But it was even worse for me because I wasn't their equal. What are you gabbing about? You're Princess Twilight's personal student. And I'm not part of some lineage of heroes or business ponies or even civil servants. Don said. I can't trace my line back ten generations to some pony who once had the grand honor of doing Princess Celestia's laundry. She smirked. Or for that matter, to a pony who bravely held back a horde of evil Durgo. But that stuff isn't important. I want ponies to like me for being me, not for something some blinking arrow did centuries ago. That's asking me to be a sugar museum exhibit for them to at. I was always sort of jealous. Don admitted. They're born having all these connections and opportunities. You've gone too, though. And you did it with your own nerves. It's easier for them, but I think when you do something for yourself, that makes it better. Makes it yours. That's one way to put it. Don agreed. There's a lot of luck involved, too. If Princess Twilight hadn't noticed me, I'd probably still be waiting for permission to look into the Canela archives. Luck's how I got here, too. Arteria glanced up and shuddered. So, you call on that Thestralia ain't exactly a short up from the ground floor, yeah? It ain't easy to get there or leave. See, between Cranberry Canyon and the surface is about a blinking bazillion miles of tunnels. Worse than that, it's basically a shocking desert. There ain't a lot of water or food. But I saw a whole lake when I went down with Berlioz. Don said. Yeah, always too much or too little, huh? It's odd finding a cave what isn't totally under the sea or dry as a bone. Any place a bat can find land and water, that's a place worth calling home. It's why we spend so shocking much time on the upside of a room, yeah? It's the only place a bat can stand sometimes. That makes a lot of sense. Arteria sighed. After Princess Luna came back, we started hearing about it. In dreams first, then she did us a real solid. She opened up the way back to the surface and ended the long walk in the dark. That's when she got some bat pony guards, right? Yeah, they're a bit of a legend now themselves. Arteria grinned. Shouts came back they braved the wild and untamed surface, met strange ponies, all sorts of tales, yeah? I heard all about that sitting in the palace, and all the other bats would natter about was how they were great. Not their ancestors or mum. Them. So you left? Well, they proved the way was safe enough, right? Ain't too much bookum to think I could do it too. 
Bit of a rough outing. Nearly died a few times. But my mum was trying to open up the way anyhow. Clear signs and wide tunnels and all that. You almost died? Eh, it's not the exciting kind of way of kicking the bucket. We not even no oak birds. Just a fair amount of going hungry and eating strange things. Gonna give you a good survival tip, yeah? Don't ever eat nothing that glows and sings to you. You know, I bet that cider is going to be a lot tastier than glowing, singing stuff. If it's something you like, I know I will too, Arteria said. She put a hoof on Don's shoulder. Don smiled and looked up at her, suddenly very excited. Oh, does that mean you're open to some book recommendations? Don't push it. What's taking her so long? Lurkin groaned. She has to get ready, Phantasma said. It takes a while for a mare to get ready for a big event. You didn't take long, Lurkin pointed out. I'm not a duchess trying to impress her mother, Phantasma said. I don't know if I can manage that kind of pressure. What do you think she's going to be like? We don't even know her name. Huh. Maybe it's secretly going to be Princess Luna. Phantasma sighed. Larrikin, how can she be Princess Luna's daughter? Princess Luna was imprisoned on the moon for a thousand years. And came back before you were born. Larrikin pointed out. Do you know for sure that she didn't decide to retire to live with the bat ponies? Me mama ain't Princess Luna, Arteria said before she'd even finished opening the door. I could hear you two gabbing from the other room, and if me mum were here, she'd be able to hang an ear on you from two streets away. Oh, wow, Phantasma breathed. You look... Beautiful, Larrikin supplied. Arteria's sunglasses were nowhere to be seen, and there must have been a mixed martial arts tournament in town because some pony had wrestled her into a dress and made her tap out on trying to escape it. The affair was complicated, multi-layered, with loose black lace like ornate fishnets as an underlayer, a corset and gorget made of stiff latex fitted around her chest and neck like ebony armor given shape and texture by seams outlined in crimson thread. Puffy sleeves and a skirt that didn't quite reach the floor, both in wine red, left her shoulders and wings exposed. Maybe even more surprising than the fact she was wearing it at all was that Arteria looked completely at ease in the outfit. Even the touches of ruby and obsidian didn't seem out of place, and her mane was actually styled and held in place by an ornate silver mane clip. Ain't been stuffed into one of these in a while, Arteria sighed. Think I remembered where all the hooks and buttons go. You look good enough to eat, Larrikin assured her. This would be more assuring if it had come from some pony with a more discerning diet, since Larrikin was known to eat anything vaguely organic put in front of her. Arteria! Don yelled down the stairs to the dorm. Your mom is about to get here. At least, I assume it's your mom. There's sort of a minor stampede in town. Apparently no pony thought about telling us how she'd actually arrive. Arteria groaned and flew up the stairs after Don. Most of the students in the school had come to watch, lining the hallways in exactly the kind of public display Arteria didn't ever want to deal with. How devil is it? Arteria asked. Well, uh, there aren't any major structure fires, so call it a five out of ten. Don replied, leading Arteria to the front doors. Are you sure you can handle this? The gawking students had mostly been kept back by velvet robes that would, in theory, lead guests to the decorated ballroom. Sunburst waved to Arteria and pointed to where she should stand, like she didn't already have it burned into her memory. Arteria took a deep breath. As long as every pony else can remember their lines for the next five minutes, she said. It'll be okay. Ibis is on the job and she never forgets anything. Blinking well makes me want to throw the opposite and forget this whole thing, Arteria muttered. Berlioz opened the doors, and a thing which had been causing so much chaos in Ponyville approached in much the way a siege engine does, driving ponies before it while protecting its contents. It also, more specifically, moved like a carriage drawn by the largest spider Dawn had ever seen, easily the size of Princess Twilight. Arteria's pet spider crawled over her shoulder from where it had been hiding among the folds of her dress to look, waving one foreleg to the approaching arachnid. 
The spider was almost silent as it moved. Despite its size, the sound of its passage like wind blowing over grassy field. It turned to face the carriage doors with the school's entrance, finally coming to a halt and waving back to Arteria's pet. The carriage itself was made of a wood dark enough that it couldn't have been entirely natural. Some unicorn had taken a look at ebony and mahogany and decided he wanted something darker than black and somehow gotten it. Two bad pony guards wearing the armor of Luna's night watch landed to either side of the door. One opened it and the other offered a hoof to the pony inside. Ibis cleared her throat and picked up the scroll she'd prepared. Not that she needed a scroll, but she had argued that it felt more natural and was a useful prop. Announcing the arrival of High Duchess Arteria Ulna Daikon, Lord Protector of Cranberry Canyon, Ibis declared. She stepped out of the shadows. She was taller and more pale than her daughter, but with the same stark white mane. Unlike the elaborate dress Karpos was wearing, Olna was wearing a black suit and a long, high-collared coat. All of it was, of course, stark black, too dark to do more than suggest that elaborate details that couldn't be seen, but only felt. A single red ruby hung at her neck, the only spot of color in her outfit. Welcome to Princess Twilight Sparkle School of Friendship, Sunburst said. I'm sorry she was unable to greet you herself. Yes, I have been told about the event, Olna said. She was the kind of pony who should have had a voice like an iron glove wrapped around velvet. She actually spoke quite quietly, though no pony had the strength to hear her because something in the weight of it silenced conversations and distractions. I am told that several artifacts have gone missing. It's nothing to worry about, Sunburst assured her. I promise. Everything will be fine. Is that so? Olna asked. I will remember to hold you to that. Her eyes slid off him, and Sunburst slumped like a pony who'd had a knife to his throat until that moment. Mom? Arteria said. Duchess Arteria Carpos Daikon. Olna said, stepping up to her. She looked down at her daughter silently for a long moment. Arteria started to sweat. You have made friends, Olna said. It wasn't a question. Arteria nodded anyway. When you left without giving warning, I was concerned you would do something foolish, Olna said. There are very many foolish things one can do between here and the safety of our home. I made it fine on my own, Arteria said. Yes, and I won't taint your achievement by implying I had something to do with it or that I was helping you from afar. She paused. I'm sure you're doing quite well. I am, Arteria mumbled. Alna very carefully didn't say she doubted that. She didn't make even a single sound of doubt. She just left a space open there for it and allowed others to fill it for her with the echoes. How, how about we go to the ballroom? Sunburst suggested. We've got food, a live band, and cider. Olna's gaze slid away from her daughter. Very well. I am curious as to how you uplanders live. She walked off, her hooves barely seeming to touch the ground. It looked less like Sunburst was leading her to the ballroom and more like he was being slowly chased and trying to make small talk with the predator at his back. She's... Something, Dawn said, once they'd got enough distance to start to feel safe. Arteria sighed, her wings slumping. Thank the stone. She's in a good mood today. I was worried some burst to be bleeding out with how uppity and improper he's being. Improper? Dawn tried to think of even one thing he'd done wrong. He spoke to her without being addressed first, Arteria explained. Mum must like him. And since it was savory, I decided the best thing to do was put it in a steamed bun, Pound explained. The High Duchess squeezed a soft, springy bun, allowing a bit of the dark paste inside to burble out. She licked it delicately. 
A fair attempt, she said. I wasn't expecting you to try and recreate any Thestralian food. It was Arteria's idea, Poundcake said. She even, um, helped in the kitchen. He smiled. Olna didn't. I am sure it was a learning experience for everyone involved. She put the bun down. I take it the others are more typical of your skill? Pound smiled, trying very hard to not sweat. I like to think I always do my best. A chef shouldn't excuse mistakes on his ingredients. Olna paused and raised an eyebrow, nodding in approval before walking away, keeping a healthy distance from the band, who were currently working their way through what might have been the Equestrian National Anthem, or they might have still been tuning their instruments, but if so, they were doing a poor job of it since none of them were in the same key. Perhaps you could introduce me to your friends, Alna suggested, turning her head just enough to let her daughter know she was being addressed. Arteria looked at Dawn. I'm Luster Dawn, she said, stepping forward. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm sure I can hardly compare to your Princess Twilight, Alna said. It must be rather exhausting keeping your place as her personal student. What do you mean? There are ponies who would do anything to have such proximity to power. Access to power, to bask in it and believe you influence the course of history, is almost as intoxicating as the power itself. I never really thought of it that way, Don said. I just enjoy learning things and digging up the truth. You're in a good place to do so. Just be aware of the power you have. It's fine to decide not to use a sword, but if you hold one and you're unaware of it, you can easily hurt another without even knowing. I'll, um, I'll keep that in mind. Let me go next, Lurkin said, bumping their way into the group. They offered a hoof, taking Olna's and shaking it. The guards appeared seemingly out of nowhere and Olna had to wave them off before they skewered the Kelpie. I didn't even know Arteria had a mom. Olna looked at her hoof in quiet horror. What is she? Olna whispered, looking back at Arteria. I'm a Kelpie. Lyrkin supplied. Do you think you could ask your daughter to make more of that brown stuff? It's amazing. I ate like whole jars of it before I thought about putting it on bread. I'll have some ship from Thestralia. I'm sure my daughter would appreciate having a taste of home as well, Alna said. No, I need to go speak to... She paused. The Sphinx. Arteria pointed. Her name's Ibis. Ah, yes. Excuse me. Alna let go of Larrikin's hoof and stepped away, trotting up to Ibis to speak with her. I think I flustered her, Larrikin said. Does that mean I'm going to be your new dad? Arteria rubbed her snout. I hope not. I've got enough of those already. Huh? Mom's got six husbands. Lurkin rubbed her chin. They must be really good at cuddling. Yeah, she's always dogging me to get married. Arteria scoffed. Huh, maybe she'll tell you to marry me, Lurkin said. I've never even worn a fancy dress before. Don laughed nervously and leaned in. I'm sure that's not really why she's here. Don whispered. I'm gonna make sure. Arteria said, moving with some unseemly haste over to her mother. From the look on Ibis's face, she was waiting to see if Olna was going to be able to solve a particularly difficult riddle. A Neolithid, Olna said. The number of limbs they have changes over time. Really? Ibis asked, looking defeated. It could also be a metaphor for age and growth, but I dislike metaphors. Mom, can we talk? Arteria asked quietly. Of course, Olna said. She said it very mildly, as befitted some pony who was getting exactly what they wanted. Why don't we sit over there, where we can have some privacy? She motioned to a few unused chairs off to the side sitting in one of them with demure grace. Arteria plopped down in hers and folded her forehooves. Why did you even come here, Mom? Arteria asked, as blunt as a brick to the head. 
Alna sat back, raising her hoof. One of the bad pony guards deposited a glass of cider in it, and she sipped at it before answering, making Arteria wait for a reply. You're my daughter. I wanted to see you. You never do anything on just a whim. True. Alna held her hoof out again, and the glass was taken from her. Some rather disturbing rumors made their way to my orbit, and I needed to make sure you were safe. She sighed, and her expression softened just a little. I worry. But now, I see that there's no way I can simply ask you to leave. Because I have a lot of good friends, and I'm my own pony, I need to make my own mistakes, even if the right blanket's stupid? Arteria asked, her usual slang slipping back in before she could stop herself. She coughed. Um, I mean, that is... No. Alna said. Because you're a natural leader when you choose to be one. A substitute baker, a substitute band, improvised decor, cider good enough to make ponies forgive a few of the rougher edges of the rest. It was all Dawn's idea, Arteria said. She had this big list and we just all went down it. I ain't gonna steal credit from her. Mostly all I did was worry and fret. Surrounding yourself with useful ponies is the most important trait a leader can have. Just try not to worry so much about putting your hoof into things, dear. That the jack tie was terrible. You should have let the baker use their best judgment. I'll remember that. Arteria mumbled. Good. You'll need to be a leader for the other bats in town. Arteria froze. What other bats? This isn't some shocking scheme to marry me off, is it? Because I swear- Alna held up a hoof. I met with the equestrian nobility before I came here because I was finalizing settlement papers. We now own a section of the cave system under the town. The first settlers will be here shortly. What? Officially, as the only Thestralian nobility in city limits, you will be in charge of them. In practice, you'll just want to welcome them and help them get around town for a few days. The mayor will be handling the actual paperwork and duties. I can't do that. Of course you can. Alna smiled. Just don't do it alone. Ask your friends for help. I like them. You do? They're not using you for your position. And they're good enough friends that they're not stumbling all over themselves agreeing with you. Alna reached over and touched Arteria's hoof. I want you to be the best pony you can be, even if it's not the same type of pony I am. I wouldn't mind letters now and then either. I'm told your friend writes to Princess Twilight. You could do the same for your mother. Arteria sighed. Okay. And you can always come home, even just to visit. Bring your friends. They're... Alna looked back. I think that damp pony is eating a whole raw onion. She does that, yeah. Arteria agreed. Shocking weirdo upland horses. Alna muttered, her tightly controlled accent slipping. Arteria giggled, smirking. End of Chapter 6 Featuring the voices of Cloudy the Leopard as Luster Dawn, Explosion Mare as Larrikin, Jaded as Berlioz, Jujuba Tree as Phantasma Gloom, Notorious Dogfight as Ibis, Quinch as the Storyteller, Rainbow Star as Arteria Carpels, and also Kit Kat 26 as High Duchess Arteria Olna Daikon, Serif Pilcro as Vice Principal Sunburst, Spaced Out Vixen as Riff, and Voltaic Sky as Pound Cake and Neon Lights. <laughs>